Okay, so moving down to task number two with eBGP neighbor establishment. Now we're going to be building or configuring eBGP session between these sets of routers, so R1, R3, R2, R4, R4, R6, and R2, R7. So this basically pretty much all these black lines right here that has the label as eBGP. The task also specifies that we do not need to advertise any route at this time. So we just need to build a session, right? So let's start off with, let's see, R1 and kind of progress from there. So R1, you go under router BGP 100, and all you need to do is to specify a neighbor. So first going to R4, or actually R3, so 172.16.123.3, and then to specify the remote AS. And since the remote AS is different from the one the router is actually in, the session is pretty much defined as an eBGP session. So right here, and I believe that's the only eBGP session for R1. Now moving on to R2, we're still under the routing process. So what we need to do is neighbor, 162.16.123. And see R4 needs a connection to, or actually R2 needs connection to R4 and R7 for eBGP. So that's for R4. Remote AS, R4 is in AS300. Now for R7, the IP of R7, as you can see, we're actually using the link IP here. So these IPs right here that we have to specify for that particular interface, we're not sourcing from loopback or anything, we just use the directly connected link. For R2 is 27.7, that's the link or the IP of the R7 interface. And then remote AS is 65.123. And now for R3, R3 has eBGP to R1 and R4. So router, BGP, and R3 is in AS200. Neighbor, 172.16.123.1 with the remote AS of 100 for, oops, I put a four, should be a one. Okay, and then neighbor, 172.16.34.4, which is the point to point zero link with the remote AS of 300 for R4. Okay, next one is R4. R4 has eBGP session to R2, R3, and R6. So you can fix T, router, BGP. 300, since this is the first time we are configuring R4, we do no auto, no sync. And then BGP router ID, 172.16.0.4, which is the R4 loopback. And then we specify our BGP neighbor first to R2, so 123.2, remote AS 100. Neighbor, 172.16.46.6. And remote AS200. So you can see as we complete the other end of the BGP session, the neighbor starts to come up. And then we have neighbor 172.16.34.3 for R3. And that will be remote AS200. R5. R5 doesn't really have an eBGP session, so we can skip that. Next is R6. R6 needs a BGP or eBGP session to R4. So let's go under R6. We are already under the router BGP. So all we need is a neighbor command, and the IP of R4 is 46.4. Remote AS 300. Okay, and the last router that we need to configure is R7. So here R7, router BGP 65123, again first time, so no auto and no synchronization. BGP router ID 162.16.0.7, and then the only neighbor that the R7 has is R2. Okay, so the IP of R2 across VLAN 27 is 27. Dot two AS 100. Okay, so let's go and make sure that all of the BGP sessions are up, starting with R1, show IBG, uh, IP BGP summary. And here we have our eBGP session to R3 being up. So uptime, zero route, AS number 200. 
Okay, R2 show IP BGP summary. Here we have eBGP session to R7, uptime, route zero. As you can see, if the session is not up, this right here will say either idle or active. Okay, but since we are seeing the actual number of routes, in this case it's just zero routes being received, it means the session is active. And we also have a eBGP to R4, show IP BGP summary for R3. Everything is up. Show IP BGP summary in R4. Everything is up here as well. And then let's just go ahead and check R6. Okay, R6 looks good. And lastly, R7. Okay, and that looks good as well. So that's pretty much complete our task number two. Okay, for our task number three, fast external fallover and graceful restart, we need to configure our routers to reset BGP session as soon as the physical link is downed, and we need to perform some tests to verify. That basically implies that you need this fast external fallover feature enabled to take the BGP session down as soon as the physical link is down. So let's start off with router one. You go config T, get under router BGP, 100 and the command for that is bgp fast external fallover let me actually do a question mark so you can see what it says right here immediately reset session if a link to directly connected external peer goes down okay so we need to enable that so bgp fast external fallover however if you go under show run and look at the configuration you will see that the command does not show up that means that that command is enabled by default so we don't really need to do anything actually on any of the routers since it's a default command. But before we actually test the eBGP session, I want to show you the comments I made earlier about as long as the there's a loopback connectivity for the iBGP, the iBGP session will stay up. So on R1, let's go ahead and shut down serial interface 000, 000 colon zero, which is the link right here. Let me kind of scroll up. So that particular link to R2 and see what happens. Let's go ahead and shut that down. Give it a second. So here, line protocol went down. But since there's still a path to reach R2 loopback zero through R5, the IBGP session doesn't really has to go down. So if you do show IP route, one say two sixteen zero dot two, you can see how it's currently pointing to one five dot five, which is the R5 zero interface. And if you do show IBGP summary. As you can see, the uptime hasn't really changed because the path for loopback to loopback has been rerouted through R5. So the BGP session doesn't have to go down at all. Okay, and that's the reason why we source from the loopback interface. Okay, let's do no shut and do our test for our fast external fallover feature. And that's going to be shutting down the fast 00, zero interface on R1. That's where the eBGP session is terminated. So interface fast zero zero, shut. As you can see, as soon as we shut the interface down, the router detected that and immediately takes down the neighbor right here due to interface flap. All right, so that's basically what the feature does. And if we do show IP BGP summary, as you can see now, the session itself becomes idle. Okay, and that means the session is currently down going to uh, R3. Okay, so let's bring that back up. Now the next task said that we need to reconfigure R1 to maintain BGP session after the physical link is down. Okay, we need to perform the test to verify and we need to put the config back. So now on R1, we go back under router BGP 100 and then we're gonna disable the fast external fallover command. So no BGP fast external fallover. Let's do a quick check on the configuration you can see right here. And now on R1, we're going to try to shut down the fast 00 interface one more time. So shut. Give it a couple seconds. You can see before the adjacency was taken down, even before we saw the line protocol change state to down message. What it means is if we now go to the show IP BGP summary, you can see the BGP session to R3 now stays up, although the interface that it really needs to talk to R3 is currently down.
And you do this when you can expect a lot of interface uh, flapped on the interface and you don't want those flaps to cause your BGP session to keep bouncing and then affect the stability of your BGP session. Let's maybe do a quick show IP BGP neighbor 123.3. As you can see, the neighbor is still shown as established. Okay, so let's bring that interface back and we need to revert back the command. So let's go back to router BGP 100 and then do a BGP fast external fallover and put that back. Do a quick show run and make sure that command has now disappeared from our configuration. Okay. okay, and then the next thing that we need to do is to globally enable graceful restart on all routers. Okay, and in case you guys are not familiar with the graceful restart concept, it's basically for a router to have that capability to informing the adjacent routers of holding the routing table while it actually goes through whether it's a failover of the route processor. And that's just to make sure that the data is continued to be forwarded. So it obviously depends on whether or not the router that you're dealing with supports that feature or not. But for us, all we need to do is just to enable globally the command. So on R1, it said all routers. So it will be a router. So we're already on, under the routing process. The command is BGP. If you do question mark right here, this command for graceful restart. And then we can copy paste. And you can see there's a, a couple of a timer values that you can configure as well for restart time and stale path time. But we're not going to change all that. Just leave a default. All we need to do is enter that command and now we're being asked to reset the BGP session for that new feature to take effect. Okay, so let's go ahead and enter that command all the way around before we start resetting BGP session. So that's R1, for R2, okay, and then R3, R3 is in 200. R4 uh, is in 300, and then R5, R6, R6 is in 200, and then R7. 65, 1, 2, 3, and then paste graceful restart. And now what we can do it's going to be have to be a hard reset. That means it's going to take down the BGP session and have to be rebuilt. And that's how the router exchanged the graceful restart capability. So you would check in a second here. So what we need to do is clear IP BGP and we can just do a asterisk or star to clear all peers. Okay. So R1, obviously it's going to reset R2 as well. So clear IP BGP. Okay, let me just copy that. Just want to make sure that all the BGP sessions are clear, although that might be kind of redundant what we're doing. Just want to make sure we're not missing any BGP sessions. Okay, six. And then seven. All right, while that BGP is still coming up for all the routers, I just want to show you instead of doing it globally, there's also an option to do it per neighbor as well. And that's going to require a neighbor command to specify what neighbor you want to enable graceful restart with. Just let me put a bogus IP just to see the command availability. So it's part of a HA mode. And then you can see right here, there's a graceful restart option as well per neighbor. Okay, so that's pretty much completes our task number three. Okay, move on to the next task and now final task number four, review BGP neighbor. So what we need to do is just review BGP neighbor on each routers and note some of the parameters. So the command for that is show IP BGP neighbor. If you just go ahead and enter, that's going to show you all the information of all the neighbors that's currently configured on the routers. For, so for example, right here, BGP neighbor this one is 0.2, so that's our R2. Remote AS is 100. It's type internal. And this remote router ID is currently established. It's been up for two and a half minutes or so. Hold time is by default is 180. 
and the keep alive interval is 60. So basically, if the router is missing a keep alive for longer than 180, it would take the BGP session down. So obviously, if you want a faster convergence, you can lower these value as well, hold time and keep alive. So rule of thumb is a three times, a hold time being a three times of the keep alive. Okay, here's the router capability that's being exchanged at the beginning of the session. Here we see the route refresh, which we'll look at later under the, when we deal with the route advertisement or route filter rather. Uh, it's supporting the full octet ASN capability. And that's just the expanded range for the autonomous system number. And by default, it supports the IPv4 address family. As you can see right here as well, the graceful restart capability, which is the feature that we enable in the previous task. And this is why it requires a session reset because the capability gets exchanged at the beginning of the BGP session. Okay, we saw the parameter that you can adjust remote restart timer, but we left it at default, which is 120 second. And then just moving down, it's just some statistic with the BGP packets with opens, notification updates. If you look into the whole mechanisms behind BGP, these are the messages that's been exchanged between BGP neighbors. And again, we're dealing with the IPv4 unicast with the session. And there's this a uh, whole lot more information that you can go through and kind of trying to understand. Okay, some connection established, three, drop two, so a little bit of historical data. And then here, more information on the graceful restart is enable, restart time is 120, and then stealth path time by default is 360 seconds. Okay, it even tells you the port. So the local port is 179, and the foreign port, which is coming from the R2, is 16746. So it doesn't really use the sourced port of 179. And that's again TCP port. We also have the TTL for the BGP packets. All right, the rest of it is not so much of an interest to us. Let me keep going down and see if there's anything else. Okay, right here is our router three, a session to router three. And obviously it's since it's a different, totally different AS number, it's been marked as an external link instead of what we saw earlier with internal. Everything else pretty, looks pretty much the same. For the whole time and keep a live interval, there's no different whether it's IBGP or EBGP session. They both keep a live 60 second and whole time is three times of that, which is 180. All right, again, everything else looks pretty much the same. So I'm just gonna go ahead and skip all that. Okay, and this is pretty much all we need to do on task number four. If you go over to other routers, the information is gonna be pretty much the same. So what we have to complete in this lab is pretty much the fundamental of BGP configuration, which is bringing up the neighbor. And we haven't really started advertising any routes or subnets, and that's going to be something we're going to look into next in the following labs. All right, so that wraps up our video on BGP basic neighbor configuration. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com, and I will see you guys in the next BGP video.